Well, I just uploaded this video asking if anyone has any questions, and let's see. It's only been like half an hour. 113 comments! Oh, are those all questions? Oh, this is gonna be a long video. First question. Uh, this is all from one guy. How are things going on the island? The banana plants, ducks, chickens, the water collection, fruit trees, the kids' car. All right, let's go look at that stuff real quick. All right, on the wharf, I've got pineapples. That one's brand new. And I've got lots of pineapples. There are a few that are almost ready. My daughter recently took the scissors to this here citronella plant. The banana circles are doing great. I should get something out of this tree, I'm guessing pretty soon, because it is big. The same with this one. This is a banana tree, that's a plantain tree. That's why that one's bigger. But I just got bananas and plantains out of this bunch. Uh, hopefully I'll get some more soon. Over here, I've got some papayas. I'm hoping these are getting bigger. Then we have tons of leafy stuff. This is like oregano and there's a mint around here somewhere. And then katuk, this is edible leaves. I don't know what that tree back there is, but I think it might be monkey tail. This is my latest banana circle. One banana plant's doing pretty well. Oh, watermelon. Oh, watermelon right there. Oh yeah, Ooh, there's a bigger one over here too. Oh, check this guy out. He's getting big. Okay, the ducks and chickens. We don't have a boy chicken because he was cock looing like all night. We, th we were hoping he would grow out of it, but after like six months of that, I just chopped off his head and ate him. He was delicious. Now we do have a boy duck and there is a girl duck inside this building who's sitting on eggs. Let's go say hi. Not scare her. Oh, there she is over there. I don't know how you can see that. She's sitting on some eggs. But I guess this chicken is keeping her company. That's very nice. I think I'm gonna have to show Ginger. This is one of the original four chickens we got. The other three died. So this one's like, I don't know, three or four years old. She's awesome. What are you guys doing? I haven't used the bulldozer in a while, except its power system, which powers the workshop. Now we didn't ask, specifically ask about that, but all right, here's the kid's car. It's, I don't know, it's just on hold right now because I've been doing all this digging, but it's going very well. Not, not too bad of a mess in here. And we've got laundry. Okay, he also asked about the water collection here. So there's a gutter here that comes to a pipe that goes underground and goes into this water tank. We've not been drinking out of this one yet. Just because, you know, there's some bits of sand that comes off here. It's probably not coming off anymore, but there's a bit of sand in the pipe. So when it rains a lot and this is all full, I'll have to run the, the water full blast to get all the sand out of it. So uh, we use that for everything but drinking. And just because we have two other water sources, one in the workshop and one in the houseboat that we drink from. Although I'm sure you could drink from this one too. You might just have a bit of sand bits. Oh my gosh, there's something. What is? What are these? Turkey burgers? Or are they meatless things? They're meatless things. Meatless inventions? And look, you made bagels. What? That's awesome. There are bagels going on in here. What? Wait, what's that, Aurora? Ah, oh, you made a pirate ship. That's the sail? Awesome, you found the whole mast. Cool. Yeah, I think there's another one though. Love Lego. Like so no one will- Oh! Look oh. at me! Who bit this? I did. Aurora <laughs> bit it. Do you want a bite? It's okay, it's already been bitten. I think he's eaten his last, last bite. Uh, and here the kids drew a picture of me. Okay, I think that covers it, Tom. And you take care of yourself too. Okay, next guy. Uh, what do I think of Bitcoin? Okay. Okay, right, what's with these huge questions? Okay, uh, let me see if I can sum this up fairly quickly. I think Bitcoin clearly has a lot of advantages over fiat currency uh, because fiat currencies are controlled by the governments or the private banks. How how is the United the U.S. How is the United States allowing a private bank? to run their money. I mean, that was the end of the country right there. Uh, yeah. this whole other video worth of stuff. <clears throat> so Bitcoin 
is harder for a government or anyone any one particular agency to control because of the way it's set up it's it has a major limitation though which is that it's not it doesn't have any inherent value like what's one bitcoin it's nothing it's just some numbers in a computer right it's not like a gold coin which was the value of that much gold or a silver coin that was the value of that much silver um, <clears throat> So when you have something that people are just agreeing on the value of it, it makes it so the value can go up and down a lot. And I have some Bitcoin and oh, anyone who has Bitcoin right now is aware that in the last year, it's like just nosedived. I think it's like, like a seventh of what the value was a year ago, something like that, something ridiculous. Um, so that's, that's one of the problems with a currency that doesn't, doesn't have any inherent value in itself um, now in terms of currencies in general I think it would be really useful if people stop doing everything with currency stop valuing currency more than everything else like people value currency more than they value their own family and friends like people will go out of their way push their friends and family aside for money which is crazy. I think it would be much more... I think it would be much better if people started, instead of valuing these currencies, if they valued themselves and their own virtue and uh, friendships and things like that. And that became the, the valuable thing that people strove for instead of money. M money is useful, but it, it should be like fifth or sixth down the line of priorities, not first, which is what it is for most people. And once it becomes such a like a lower priority for people, the form of the money is not as important. Because the thing is, the form of the money isn't going to matter if people value it in a way that screws up their lives. Even if you went to a barter system, if people were just obsessed with you know transactions and value that has not that doesn't necessarily have value to them, it just makes for a crappy life. So don't worry so, so much about money. Value your relationships and yourself, improve yourself, improve the world around you. Don't call and pay for something every time there's a problem. Try to figure stuff out for yourself. But that's what I think of money in general, and Bitcoin specifically. Okay, second question. Oh, another big question. What are you doing different for your forever home compared to the dome structure? I'm guessing he means the dome here. Let me show you. Okay, so this dome here I made for Deshaina. So I built that dome for Deshaina, and I know this is going to bring up another question of why are we living in separate places? Oh, to, to put it simply, she drives me nuts. I don't want to speak for her or anything, but I can definitely speak for myself, so she drives me nuts. So, you know, not, not anything hugely surprising there, I'm guessing. Um, you know, we didn't have kids together because we are awesome, awesomely meshing well together. We had kids together be because we thought we could make awesome kids and give them an awesome childhood, which is which is working out very well. So, um, so when I built her house, I was trying to build it to her specifications, and <laughs> I don't want to sound like a jerk or anything, but she said a lot of different things, and they changed as I was going, and I was <laughs> it was driving me a little bit nuts, but I was just trying to stay focused on the thing, and you know my brains were kind of all over the place, and. Ah, so, when I build my house, I'm not listening to anyone. I don't want any advice from anyone. I don't want any any input, unless it's something specifically, like I, I go ask someone some technical question, like, hey, what size wood beam should I use to span this, this distance or whatever? You know, some kind of technical question like that. But I'm just gonna like go into my own brain, do exactly what I want, the way I want it, and I'm gonna try to make sure I don't cut any corners or do any BS that's that's not going to be the best thing I can do so I'm just gonna try to make it really good and really long lasting and um, you know if if I'm only doing what I'm deciding to do uh, it's much easier to stay uh, in the right kind of mindset because you know I've done contracting before for other people and you know 
anyone who's done contracting will know exactly what I'm talking about. And this is the same situation I had with building Deshana's house. You know, like you start working on something, you get it halfway done, and the person says, oh, I want that a little bit different. You can just change that, right? And it's like, oh, okay, now I'm not halfway done. I'm only a quarter of the way done. And then it's like, okay, now I'm three quarters of the way done. Oh, but they want to change something again. Okay, now I'm only halfway done. And yeah, if, if you can just get one person, which will be me, deciding on what's going on and doing it, it's just the whole thing is more cohesive and there's a lot fewer like frayed edges just going off in dead end directions. So I don't know if that answers the question. What am I doing differently for my, for my forever home? Yeah, and, and everything I'm doing here, I'm just going to, I'm planning to, to be in this new place I'm building for the rest of my life. And I want it to last for, I mean, several generations after that. So I'm just going to try to make it super awesome. And yeah, and I guess the biggest thing is I'm, I'm totally going to ignore any input anyone else gives me. Okay, maybe we can get a smaller question next. Okay, next guy. The universe, what the hell is it? Oh, seriously? All right. Hmm. That's a nice big question. Let me, let me think about this for a second. Okay. My best guess for, you know, the nature of the universe is that we are in someone, we're in a, we're in a universe or in a, in a realm. I don't know what you call it. In a section of the universe that was created by someone else's imagination. Someone thought of something and then, and then our universe is there, and now we're here, and you know, when I think about something, if I think, hey, there's some kid on a swing set, swinging around, playing at the park, and he has some friends, and then I come back here and stop thinking about it, what, does that universe just stop being there? No, I implied in my head when I was thinking about it that there was a large, robust universe there. So to that kid swinging on the swings, that universe is real. To me, it's just an imaginary thing that I thought about for a second and I'm gonna forget about. But to him, that's all real. So that's their universe. I'm guessing that's what we are. We're just this thing that someone thought of at some point. We're just imaginary nothingness to them. But to us, we're real. And I don't, th and, it, and you know, to their, and the person who thought of us, they're probably in some imaginary universe to something else. And it just keeps going on and on. And in this kind of scenario, I don't think there would have to be a, uh, a hierarchy like there's not like a spot where it started like a first guy who thought of the the universe and then all those people in that universe thought about all the rest of the universes and it just gets bigger no i don't think there would be a beginning and an end to it and here's why <laughs> i'm not sure if i'm going to be able to explain this in words but uh just imagine nothing exists like there's no space there's no stuff there's there's nothing like literally no time nothing None of it exists. If you can, if you can like wrap your head around that, you realize like what a kind of crazy circumstance it is that anything is, exists. And just the fact that anything exists, just because the, the nature of, of that dichotomy between existence and non-existence, there's an implica implication that there's no beginning. There doesn't have to be a beginning. Like if something exists compared to nothing, then there, there doesn't have to be a beginning or an end. Because if the alternative is that, is that nothing exists, if literally nothing existed, there would be no, no potential for anything to exist, right? So there, 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 it's not like there could ever be a start. And if there's a potential for something to happen, that's a thing that exists. So, clear as mud. Basically, I think we're just some dreamed up thing in a story or computer program or a video game or a movie or some figment of the imagination of some other thing that thought of us. Oh, and I don't think we're necessarily just one, just the, the figment of imagination of one thing. I think all this stuff blends together. Even just my talking about that idea, expressing that idea, that makes it true in some imaginary world, which we could very well be part of. Um, <clears throat> so if something thinks of a, thinks of some, okay, if I think of some kid on a swing and he's got some robust universe, and then later someone else thinks of some, some asteroid floating through space, there's nothing to, 
there's nothing preventing those two things from being part of the same universe. So they could very well coexist within a certain imaginary universe. And then there could also be in another, another imaginary universe where only one of those things would exist and not the other. And it all just blends together into this big scrambled egg of reality. <laughs> okay, next question.